to be alive. To be alive. Not just the carcass, but the spark. That's crudely put, but if we're not meant to dance, why all this music? That's a poem by Gregory Orr. I said last night that maybe the title should evolve this weekend and be, if we're not supposed to play music, why all this dance? I wanted to capture, capture is the wrong word. I wanted to experience the possibility of rhythm, of meter, of tempo, not just design and shape in the world, in the outside natural world, in place. In that spirit, I want to acknowledge the First Nations people of this land, the Duwamish, people that lived here for hundreds, thousands of years, that lived in the interconnected and interdependent relationship with the animate earth, with all that is, with the more than human, listening for the rhythms and the movements and the language in relationship as body and as earth body. This project, I chose four locations, or they chose me, um, to explore this relationship and to experience what arises in movement and in ideas and feelings and memories and visions and change, transformation. I have a writing practice, I'm a writer as well as a dance maker, and I did this last night. I am Karin. <laughs> I don't know who I am, <laughs> although I think a great deal of you do know who I am. Um, and I, I will be writing about these works and about these ideas, about this art and practice of movement, about this belief in a rhythm of becoming, of bodily becoming, about this, this understanding that all of life is movement at the quantum level, at the, at the idea of the animacy of being. And I also made these four dances. I began with um, improvisations in these four locations. I um, used my phone to capture these improvisations. The first dance was in Kauai. The second uh, was on Cortez Island when I spent a week with um, David Abram, the cultural ecologist and philosopher who coined the term the more than human. The third dance was um, in Landover Woods, where um, one of my daily circuits, almost daily runs, is to a particular um, woodsy area near our house up north near Shoreline, still in Seattle. And uh, the fourth is, um, was in my backyard, a, a small space where we let the grass grow wild and began um, improvising in the winter a year ago and in the summer when the graminaceous beings, that's a word I used as I was writing, the grass beings were as high as my knee and my thigh. These dances then evolve when I bring them into the process or these movements, I guess, just like life evolves and there's layers and complexity as I um, moved into who were the humans coming into this space to be a part of embodying these movements that came from my practice outside. And then what were the shapes and forms and ideas of these pieces and what were they speaking to me about? And that'll be in my writing. But then these dances are more than, they're not a rigid structure. They exist like an organism, like a human body that comes into a space when the light changes, it may be rainy, it may be sunny, someone may be upset, the mood changes, there's the now, that we're always experiencing the way things are shifting and changing and we are moving and responding and have the ability to cultivate practices of moving and responding to create more connection, more well-being. So these dances come here tonight. They were given, um, a videotape was given of each dance to each of the four music groups that are playing tonight. I believe they had, um, they took one rehearsal together with the video and then they showed up last night and they played with the dance for the first time and then tonight will be the second time which is really exciting for some of us that are seeing it for the second time to see the new 
the evolution, the life that comes in the now and the moment. For me, all of this is driven by what I understand to be a process of overcoming a disembodied Western white supremacist narrative that has been moving forth patterns of disease and harm for a long time of bodies disconnected from, or minds disconnected from bodies, those minds, some minds dominating other bodies and the lands and the water and the more than human. And I believe that we must cultivate practices of movement for well-being, for our personal selves, and also for the collective, for the planet, for our nation. So tonight, you'll see my vocational call as an artist to create art, but I hope that it inspires every one of you in the room to think about an art and practice in your own life, what it would mean for you to continue to see the shifting changes of movement, the streams that you can tap into to be a part of this evolution, this change, this overcoming in our nation and for our planet and for your personal health, for the relationships in your family and in your workplaces. And I invite you to be inspired, not only to see this process of movement as an aim for yourself, but also as a daily practice of cultivating an art of your own life. I want to say thank you to our donors. Thank you to our monthly sustainers. Thank you to Case Van Rai and the Dantzler family. Thank you to my own family. And um, uh, the, the, the support comes from some of the friends and family of the dancers and the musicians. Um, we have collectively pulled together to continue to move and move again and make a great sound for something that really matters, which is live coming together and feeling not the space between us, but the air that we share. There'll be a five minute space or so between each piece. Um, we invite you to um, grab a drink from the bar if you'd like. It um, supports velocity. And um, I can't think of anything else. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Enjoy.